Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. F Dash here with F Dash TV. Another card monsters video here for you. And I'm, I want to talk to a very specific part of the card monsters population. So if you are a legendary player, this video is not for you, right? You don't need any of these tips or don'ts, I guess. Um, so if you'd like to watch, cool, but you already know this, right? So what I, who I want to speak to are the, the who I refer to as noobs, right? So if you just started the game or if you've been playing for a little bit and you're creeping your way up through, you know, gold, elite, I think is what it's called, uh, into platinum, maybe even just got to diamond grandmaster, this video is for you, all right? I have spent the, I think I at this point, I've spent more of my card monsters career playing in low level than I have in high level. So I've had, I have a very unique perspective on this because I play a lot of these types of people, right? I play a lot of people who just got the Diamond Grandmaster, who, you know, who were just on the cusp of getting out of gold into platinum. Definitely played a crap ton of platinum people, and I played everybody in between. Um, those levels and I just I find that they make the same mistakes over and over and over and over so my hope with this is not to call out people and say you suck but more to to educate those types of players and say hey look if you don't do these three things you're gonna be so much better off for it right so hopefully uh, we learn from this and um, your decks will be better your your um, Fights will go better and you'll have a, a much better time in the game. So the very first thing that you should not do in this game, according to me, is don't overpay. Now, now you could take this a couple different ways, okay? Uh, I don't mean it this way, but you could say don't overpay for the resources in this game. And I, I would wholly agree to that. Don't, don't go in here and start buying stuff from the shop with money. That's... Probably not going to be the best ROI, right? But that's not actually what I mean. What I mean is don't overpay for your card costs, right? So one of the, obviously, the, the biggest thing in this game is creating your deck. And without a good deck, you're basically screwed, right? So, and I, I totally understand that at the beginning of the game, you're kind of, uh, you're, you're strapped for resources, right? And so you can't exactly make the greatest deck ever. I totally get that. And, and... I'm looking beyond that, right? So you have the resources, and even at low level, you can make really good decks that don't have really high card costs, right? Um, and this will this will definitely go into the second one as well. But the first one is don't overpay for your card costs. And what I mean by that is when you first start the game, right, um, a lot of people go purple. And there's nothing wrong with the purple color. Nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, but what a lot of people will do is they'll grab... Where is he? They'll grab these cards that cost like four, right? And not every card that costs a lot, yeah, they do a lot of damage, but they're not all great, right? And they're definitely not all created equal. A a blue dragon at five, probably not a terrible choice, right? And that's cool. Uh, a noble at four, fantastic choice. However, an abyss knight at four, you're not gonna be able to level him up too much, probably most likely not to level four where he actually becomes really useful. So just because you have him or just because you can get him doesn't mean you should put him on your team, right? Because realistically, he for what he's going to give you, he, the ROI is really bad, right? And so essentially what happens is that people will, will create decks where they'll just have a bunch of really, really expensive cards and they'll put them all together. And it's sort of like, what, you know, what are you, what are you thinking here? What exactly is the, you know, the point of this? Let me see if I can go here and show you exactly what I mean here. Uh, there was somebody I faced, not that card. I faced a little earlier today that it just, the, the deck didn't make sense to me because all he had was really expensive cards, right? So, so, I mean, this is not the guy, right? But look at this deck, right? So he's got a four cost chaos dragon, right? He's got the five cost blue dragon, and he's got a seven cost earth dragon. That those are really really expensive, and they don't necessarily you know go together, right? Uh, now luckily he does offset that right with a lower cost 
few lower cost cards, right? And that's what you need to do. If you are going to get high cost cards, make sure that they're not all high cost cards, right? Because your deck is just not going to work like that. You definitely need cards that offset how expensive some of your other cards are. Where is that deck? It was really, really bad. Like, I, I was super confused why he used it. Could have swore it was green. I play a lot of bots, so. But yeah, so if you are going to do high high cost, make sure you offset it with lower cost cards. And this does not, this does not go and extend to green, right? So at, at level one, you can make a really, really good green deck uh, with very, very high cost cards. I could have sworn there was one in here. Uh, with very, very high cost cards, and it's okay, you know, because there are cards that can, you know, lower the cost of those cards. Let's just go to the collection here. Uh, so if we go to green, green has a lot of very, very high damage cards, yes, but it also has, they're, all, they're very, very expensive, right? So look at this card. Uh, is he six? Yeah, check this card out. Living Spirit, and this is a level one. 7-4, that's pretty nasty, right? 7-4 for that guy. This guy's very popular at, at uh, that rank. The three-headed butterball, you know, comes in and does four with opportunity. Um, and you can level him up pretty easily because he's only a, a, what is that, a common, rare, whatever. Um, but you notice the cost, right? You've got the behemoth here, also does four, has 11 health, six cost, chimera. 3-9, but he attacks twice, also 6. The Earth Dragon is 7, right? But the cool thing with green is that it has cards such as the Corrupted Vapia, which can bring the cost of green cards down, right? This one does it to, to 3. That makes it much more manageable to use those high-cost cards. You're going to want to bring a few of those along with you. Uh, this guy here will bring things down to four, which is still better than, you know, seven. Um, and there's a few other cards that do the same thing. So if you are going to do high cost, I would, I would say go and do it with green because you can handle it better. But don't just stick a whole bunch of uh, high cost cards together with no viable way to, to use them um, from turn to turn, right? Because you're, you're going to be screwed, basically, because you're not going to be able to do anything. You're going to be able to play one card while the other person obliterates your deck. So just don't do that. Now, that leads me to number two. So if you do do high cards or, you know, you decide to do a couple high cards, offset it with some low cards, make sure that you don't ignore synergy. Now, what is synergy? Synergy is essentially these cards go together and they complement one another, each other. And, you know, so here's an example of synergy. Right, so in this red deck here, we've got Garuda, who obviously is going to, on his red side, is going to increase the melee attack every single round that he's alive, right? Which obviously bodes well for cards such as Cat Knight, who you want to do maximum damage, cards such as, you know, Fox Girl, who of course you would like to do ultimate damage to, and even these one cost card soldiers, right? So that makes sense because those cards go together. However, if I use this and I took out these cards and instead I had a bunch of range cards, then what's the point of having Garuda in here because he increases, on his red side, he increases melee gain, right? And as a range user, I'm not going to get any benefit from him. Right. So another another example of no synergy here is having basically the same deck that I have now. I know obviously I can't have it, but I'm saying as an example and then also having something like Ali in there. Right. Who has uh, what is this called? I forget who has outbreak. Right. So having an entire deck that has no poison, no way to actually trigger her outbreak, but having her in it. Right. That doesn't that doesn't go together. It doesn't synergize a big one that I see. Um, and I hate to harp on him, but the Abyss Knight is just, he's very popular for some reason here um, in lower levels. Having him in a deck without any means to, to, to fear, I don't like, this is what I'm saying, like it just, it, there's no point of having it and having him in your deck if 
you're not going to take advantage of his actual abilities. So synergy in this game is putting cards together whose abilities complement one another, right? So don't make an entire deck of like dice monsters and then throw this guy in it and think it's going to be really good because guess what? It's not, right? Because this guy he kind of sucks at level one, right? And he's not really good until you can start fearing. But if you have no reliable way of continuing to fear your opponent, then really what's the point of investing in that card in the first place, right? So I think all of these actually synergize here. Uh, so he, actually, here's a deck. He's not in it, right? But all of these cards have chase, right? Look how much chase I have in this deck. And then you've got Big Bones here who actually does fear. And then when you check out the items, more more chase. I'm calling it chase. I believe it's called menace. It is, yeah, it's called menace. Um, more menace, more fear. Look at those fear with, the, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like you want to synergize, right? So don't ignore that. Don't, again, just put a bunch of really quote unquote good cards together and expect it to be really good. And again, if you're a, a legendary player, yes, I know that at that level, you can actually just forget about synergy because you can just throw all the damn ultimates together. Ultimates, the, the legendary cards together. I get that. And again, this doesn't apply to this applies to us lower level folk who don't have those types of cards. Um, don't just throw cards together because you have them, right? I, I get it. You know, you want to use the card, but try to find a deck that actually works with that card, right? Don't just throw crap together. Uh, where is that other one that I have? Panda, the first panda, right? I have, um, as you can see, it's mostly, mostly uh, green items. And then I have like this one random yellow item, or the yellow monster. Kind of looks a little weird, but then you notice as well I have the Cross Lovers, who also has a yellow side. I would never use the yellow side, but notice how much uh, how much range damage I have, right? So again, synergy. I'm going to come in here as a green Cross Lover and increase range damage. So notice how many range monsters I have, right? You're not just throwing cards together just because you have them right guess who would not be really good in this deck fox girl as great as she is none of the other cards here really complement her um so she's just not going to synergize well so don't ignore synergy make sure your cards go together and it actually makes sense lastly the third tip of what you should not do in this game i think is don't overplay and what i mean by that is if you have if there's one monster on the field right don't, you want to use the least amount of cards possible to take out your opponent's cards right so let's just watch this match here um and i'll, I'll try to show you all three of these don'ts right don't overpay don't ignore synergy and don't overplay so there's a snowman versus me so he's got one card here I mean that's all he can do so here um, you know we just come in do the one card don't need to do anything else so notice how many cards he's got out on the board that is it's actually a good idea right because he needed three different ways to, to hit that fog card right so that's fine You see here, I don't need three cards, not at all, right? So I just go with my two cards, take out this card here in the middle. Don't need to fill your board, right? Because, and I know that I can't destroy his entire board, so it's not a problem. Again, he goes with the board fill, another item here. And an item kind of screws him over, to be honest, right? Kind of sucked for him. At this point, right, I'm going to throw this guy in here, give him a little bit of health, and that's going to pretty much take out his entire board. But you see how I didn't need to do that in the beginning, right? I could just sit back, gather crystals, and not have to worry. Uh, they're all going to get taken out here soon. But And then, you know, so... And notice all these cards here cost two, which is going to come back to bite me in the ass. I'm not saying to make a deck of all cards that cost two because this is the reason you don't want to do this you can come in and get contempted and then your entire deck there is just obliterated right 
But notice, very smart idea. Didn't need to play anything else. Didn't need to fill his board anything else, right? But I can go ahead and, of course, set up because that's what I can do. And he's just going to quit here. But hopefully you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say when I say don't overplay, right? You don't need to fill your board every second just because you can. This took me a really, really long time to understand that you only need to play certain cards um, at certain times. And one of the big things to understand is that, hey, sometimes it's a lot better to let your card die, get some crystals, and then regroup at another turn rather than trying to save that card by throwing in another card, right? So don't overplay. Definitely don't overpay with real money, but in terms of card cost, you want to make sure your cards... I, honestly, the first two, they, they go together so much. You, your cards need to synergize, right? And that also extends the cost. You want to make sure that your card costs don't overlap with each other, right? So you've got a bunch of fours, fives, and sevens. Again, unless we're talking about green, in which case that's okay. Um, and there is world equilibrium as well, where you can drop everything to four, but then everything is four. And unless you've got some really strong synergy, I don't, I don't see it working out very well. So there you have it. These are my don'ts. Uh, if you are in, again, anywhere from Chuck Novice to Diamond Grandmaster 4, I think these are things that you should not be doing. And if you've somehow done all of this and you've made it to Grandmaster 1, definitely leave me a comment because I would like to talk to you because that doesn't make any sense. Don't overpay, don't ignore synergy, don't overplay. Have a good time in Card Monsters. I really hope that um, some of this was helpful for some people. If it wasn't, eh, whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time on F-TV. Take it easy.